Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for S and Gold Fundamental and Technical Analysis. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow colleagues if you like the analysis that I provide to you every week. So, uh, getting into some of the fundamentals in the week ahead. Uh, 30th of January, uh, this is from Trading Economics and uh, let me zoom in a little bit. It says we'll be, it will be a very busy week with central bank meetings in the US, UK and Euro area and non-farm payrolls report taking central stage. Also investors will follow inflation and GDP growth rates for major European economies including Germany, France and Italy. And finally, we um, it will be worth following fresh PMI readings for the US, China, Canada Austra and Australia. As we don't really look at the others. Um, so just a little bit more detail um, uh, when it comes to what's coming up. So the upcoming week brings a lot of news for investors to digest, among them a highly anticipated Federal Reserve interest rate decision and the non-farm payrolls reports. Inflation has shown signs of cooling, fueling hopes that the Federal Reserve would slow down the pace of its monetary policy tightening by delivering a smaller 25 basis point hike on Wednesday. So um, that is really you know where um, the signs are pointing if they do um, ultimately the uh, the dollar uh, should is probably on a, on a depreciating cycle and on the other hand um, we've got uh, Europe so in Europe the European Central Bank also and the Bank of England are expected to move forward with their aggressive campaign on inflation and interest rate um, and and raise interest rates apologies by 50 basis points on Thursday on the macro uh, front the key reports on growth inflation and unemployment will be released for the euro area Germany Italy France and Spain so uh, lots going on uh, this week on with, with the majors so let's get into some of the technicals and marry them with the fundamentals as we typically do now going on to the dollar index and uh, one second and the dollar index um, is just a measure of dollar strength against uh, various currencies like the euro, the yen, and the pound. And um, and yeah, so we've come down to this uh, this demand zone, which we've kind of hovered around for a good couple of weeks now. Um, the 101, 102 area. And so I think uh, what investors and traders are waiting for and the institutions are waiting for is really uh, a sign as to what the Federal Reserve are going to do with monetary policy. And um, and so uh, the, the thinking is that the Fed is set to shrink uh, rate hikes again uh, as inflation slows. And it's really important that you understand, um, you know, inflation interest rates and GDP and really the relationship between the three because ultimately it's what drives um, currency prices because um, value and price are different um, they're not the same thing and over the medium to long term value eventually uh, shows its you know uh, shows on, on a price chart whereas price in the very very short term if you're trading you know five minute ten minute charts it's all really about you know liquidity hunts and grabs etc but if you want to really learn how to understand where prices are likely to go in the uh, in the short in the medium to long term um, over the next you know uh, one to three to six months it's really important that you do understand fundamentals and actually talking about fundamentals um, I've got a free webinar if you type in webinar on the trading 180 channel type in webinar and um, I've got a couple of webinars I would definitely recommend um, the fundamental analysis webinar three steps to generating a profitable trade idea three steps and also as well this one here right that will definitely get you on track as well as everything else that YouTube suggests and as well just to remind you that I do have a uh, the opening for the trading 180 um, mentoring where you get the uh, fundamental analysis spreadsheet where we rank and rate um, the currencies. We also, and I also show you um, the currency value cycle and this is not spoken about anywhere online on YouTube. Um, it's a concept um, that uh, I created and um, ultimately it serves us very, very well when understanding which currencies to buy and sell. It's not just a case of ranking uh, a currency one um, and being strong and eight being the weakest. There are times where eight 
will be revalued and one will actually start to devalue right and so you know the mentoring is done through um discord as well as lo regular live meetings on a wednesday we have some high level conversations in here it's not about just typical support and resistance um we actually do talk about and understand um the fundamentals to a very high level and also the enrollment starts on the 6th of february so seven days from now and there are various levels of access. So, um, getting back to the uh, the article, you know, understanding why this was going to happen, and we knew this was pretty much happening, which is hence the reason why we've been shorting the uh, the dollar. But also, as well, it could be a data surprise, right? We could see higher inflation, which would then uh, take all bets off the table. But uh, the Federal Reserve is set to shift. Uh, down the pace of interest rate hikes again in the coming week amid signs of slowing inflation while Friday's jobs reports may show uh, steady demand for workers that improves the chances of a soft landing for the world's largest economy so lots going on there to, to think about but the general consensus is that inflation is coming down therefore uh, um, they are less likely to hike rates um, uh, continue hiking rates that the hiking cycle is coming to a potential end which then will um, pretty much devalue the dollar over the short to medium term and uh, feds will also back slowing the next rate hike to 25 basis points so there's support there um, but if obviously something changes then um, then obviously the dollar will either um, you know appreciate if they go to 50 basis points uh, for sure that'll take the market by surprise and if they don't uh, hike at all or zero then I think the dollar is going to um, going to do devalue even more so where we are technically 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 um, it's all really going to be driven by what the Fed say if you want to try to anticipate what the Fed is saying um, in terms of um, rate hikes or lack of um, uh, hawkishness um, a more dovish a dovish um, uh, uh, statement then you could look for a, any pullbacks into a supply zone before looking to get short if that happens um but i don't know whether it will but let's see um but even if you are looking to get short on the dollar um now is definitely not the best time really and truly you really want to see prices prove that it wants to devalue then a pullback into a supply zone before getting short so that's really the the thinking behind um you know uh, trying to uh, trade uh, the dollar or any any kind of um, currency pair, right? You don't want to, you know, buy high or sell low. That doesn't make any sense. Try and short low, even if prices go lower. That's not the smart thing to do. So always wait for pullbacks. And look for bargain areas to uh, to look to uh, buy or uh, or expensive areas to sell, right? So the dollar for me overall bias is still to the short side, even if prices come up in the short term, unless the data proves otherwise. Uh, dollar yen um, again from last week, the analysis just waiting for really pullbacks again. If the dollar remains weak into this uh, supply zone before looking at getting short, not really much to kind of say uh, on this other than from. Uh, uh, from last week you know pretty much the market over the last five days has, has been in this really uh, tight uh, auction I guess some people would describe it as a range but uh, the market is an auction so uh, fair value auction so it's really kind of stayed between this 13086 and 129 so really not really much uh, pips in there uh, probably about 190 pips maybe for an intraday trader and the intraday really on that lower time frame it might be enough but from a daily perspective prices really haven't moved anywhere so um, again any pullbacks up into uh, the 132s 132.50s I think a decent even higher would be even better um, and again same thing if you're looking at any buy trades I think now this has probably created an okay demand zone to look for any kind of buy trades if you're looking at buying the dollar and, and a reversal of fortunes in the short term for the dollar um, and any positive news out for the dollar I think that's decent a decent buy technically so uh, dollar Swiss again from last week we uh, really again haven't really moved anywhere it's just been kind of you know um, auction in between this high and this low we did come up to the one um, sorry the 0 0.928 uh, area uh, but nothing really so again I think for me if I'm looking at buying from a technical level I'm not really trading this pair 
I'm not really interested in it, but if you are, I'd say the bottom end of that area, the 90, 91 area, uh, would be decent for a uh, buy trade if you're looking to buy the dollar. Any kind of sell trades, probably further up towards the 94 uh, cent area is where I would look for any kind of uh, uh, sell trades. And you've also got the added, um, uh, the added uh, confluence, I guess, of support and resistance right there as well. So that level's definitely been uh, traded in that 94 area. So um, a decent uh, area of um, of supply should be in, in and around that area. But that's, again, just determined by if you think that the Swiss franc is a bargain here or the dollar is expensive. Um, moving on to the dollar CAD. The CAD, interestingly enough, um, and the Bank of Canada have decided that they're not looking to um, hike rates um, anytime soon. They're actually probably one of the first banks to now start to hold rates um, and have a wait and see approach. And um, they reached their terminal rate. And so uh, for me, um, the CAD is, is not a buy. But against the dollar, again, I'm not really looking to trade this pair, but I think this is a decent zone uh, for a decent buy on the dollar anyway, against the Canadian dollar because you know the dollar is actually still hiking rates whereas um the uh, the canadian dollar might not actually hike rates or they're signaling that they're not looking to hike rates they've come to an end so actually in fact if you are looking to buy the dollar i think probably the canadian dollar might be a decent buy against the um the canadian dollar uh for now um the new zealand dollar new zealand dollar hasn't pulled back right looking for pullbacks this week if you wanted to get long on this new zealand uh, dollar but nothing has has come back so um really looking for kind of like a first pullback probably into this zone before looking at getting long um you do i mean you can extend this zone probably a bit higher but i would definitely say the uh, the round number of 63 cent would be the best area to look for any kind of um, uh, uh, long trades. I don't really like buying at highs. I'm not really trading this pair anyway, but if I was, then that would be where I would look for a uh, a, uh, a trade. Because if you're looking at that area being the low, uh, one second, uh, right. So if you're looking at this area being um, a bargain price and this being a new high, uh, fair value is around the 50% area so that's where you're looking to you know try and get long just below fair value um, pound dollar and the pound dollar very interesting um, uh, level uh, here we've come up to a nice a decent supply zone and then we've got one just above it I think there is an opportunity to short this um, this currency pair I don't like the pound um, as, a, as a buy at all so um, I do think that the dollar actually could be um, a bit better than it. So if it comes up to uh, up to the uh, above the 25, 25, 50 area, I think that supply zone is decent for a short trade. And again, it depends on what the Fed really kind of do. Um, but if you do want to be a buyer of the pound, then it's really looking at pullbacks down into the one, two, twos, one, two, one area. And talking about the pound, fundamentally, uh, UK wage inflation points to another big rate hike this week. So uh, Bank of England expected to raise key rates to 4% on Thursday, but policymakers are concerned about inflationary spiral. And so um, the inflationary spiral is, um, you know, can hurt the economy, right? So Britain's soaring wage inflation is likely to push, push the Bank of England into uh, another a sharp increase in interest rates this week. Investors and economists expect the UK central bank to raise its key rate um, a half a point to 4% on Thursday. That would mark the highest since 2008 and the quickest string of hikes in three decades. Now, typically, again, rate hikes um, are typically positive, um, or I say positive, but they are um, they appreciate a currency or they're, they're, that's their intended uh, function. But... Um, the market is more forward thinking and is probably priced that all in right now. And the Bank of England actually are projected to hike, um, sorry, to, to actually not um, or to end their hiking cycle uh, soon as well, alongside the uh, the uh, the dollar. And so um, 
there is uh, the potential for prices to kind of go higher temporarily but I think it could start to you know pull back to the one two ones and even just below that around the uh, uh, 119s potentially uh, again just depending on um, what the, the the Federal Reserve do and also as well uh, the UK's GDP which I expect I actually expect to be uh, quite poor moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar just keeps grinding higher right I'm looking for a pullback prices are pulling back a little bit I'm pulling back to this area here um, but I do think think that we are still quite high from a moving fair value perspective I know the monthly is in that zone as well um, so that actually gives some confluence to the to the value perspective but um, I it just it's just for me just visually I don't like buying at highs but this is going to be the first area to look for some buy trades if prices do come down to that 107s and if it comes down even further then that would be even an even better buy I do prefer this uh, lower zone the 105s if it can come down here um, that would be really really nice uh, but again I think this demand zone is going to be driven by what um, happens this week with the European Central Bank as well as uh, the Federal Reserve and so the uh, ECB's rate hike week may feature slowing inflation stalling GDP so euro uh, zone inflation probably slowed marginally after the economy either stalled or even contracted according to forecasts for crucial data before next week's uh, interest rate decision and so um, you know slowing inflation obviously um, and I say obviously but uh, slowing inflation is uh, would, would force the central bank to kind of end their hiking uh, cycle sooner but um but it's still basically quite high and so there was a quote i think from um from christine lagarde who says with inflation still way too high in the words of president christine lagarde the ecb will certainly raise the deposit rate by half a point this week to continue the most aggressive monetary tightening tightening in history and um this is a, an image from um, one of the banks that we uh, that we look towards in a private group, who basically have come out and um, you know ranked the uh, ECB as being you know still with the most tightening to do. Whereas Canada, you can see actually they've reached more their terminal rate a lot sooner, right? Bank of Japan, SMB, Federal Reserve, RBA, Bank of England, RBNZ. Um, now some people might be thinking why you know why are you short on the Bank of England if they are. Um, you know seen as hiking quite a lot and it's really because of their economy so not again not all rate hikes are good you have to understand what the economy is doing and whether the economy can support their uh, rate hikes because rate hikes uh, uh, can be damaging uh, to the economy if you if they hike too much and too fast because it hurts uh, business and growth with borrowing and lending costs right so um so for me uh, i do want to be a uh, still want to be a seller of the pound and the at the moment a buyer of the euro until obviously the data if the data doesn't support that narrative then i probably may change my mind and <coughs> maybe stay out of the euro and while it pulls back but as long as the data supports the narrative i'm going to be long on that euro so any pullbacks into there into the uh this first demand zone the 107 um put at the bottom of the 107 area um and even better the 106s uh moving on to the aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar again uh, blasting through some levels the Australian dollar had some inflation uh, data come out which was actually positive um, I say again not positive but more um, appreciative of the currency uh, um, inflation came out higher than expected I think the higher since 1990 and so the expectation now is for the um, the RBA to look to now continue to hike rates and again going back to the um, the image of uh, you know priced in so the RBA is still looking to you know they're like the fourth on the list uh, when it comes to central bank uh, hikes and so any I think any pullbacks are going to be decent for uh, for any kind of buy trades so any pullbacks into the 90 sorry 60 uh, 69 50 area 69 40 area I think is going to be really nice as a buy uh, for Australia also as well hoping that the um, China's uh, zero COVID policy comes to an end and that will benefit the Australian dollar a lot more 
Aussie yen, again, not a pair I'm looking to trade. Both are actually quite strong. I'd probably say the Australian dollars at the moment is expected to you know, grind higher. Um, uh, but the, and I think towards maybe the second half of the year or the end of this quarter, or at least the second quarter, we should see, in fact, um, the, uh, the yen start to strengthen because they are in the midst of potentially changing their monetary policy um, and enacting uh, policies that actually are appreciative of the yen. So for the first time in a very long time, but again, that is data dependent. Um, so if you are looking to get long on this currency pair, then you're looking at a pullback into this zone, the 9150s before looking at getting long. And gold, gold again keeps grinding higher with the dollar going lower, um, you know, gold grinding higher and you've really got to uh, uh, wait for this pullback if you're looking to get involved in gold. Everything pulls back eventually, um, people take profits, so this is going to be the first area to look for any kind of buy trades, the 1900 um, area. Um, or back down, I would probably say the 1870s would be the better zone to look for a uh, buy trade. So, um, so yeah, I think it's just you know been grinding higher. Um, there's been talk about obviously you know the debt clock, um, and um, yeah, worries about the U.S. economy. So with all that going on, um, gold is you know looking to just keep grinding higher. But any pullbacks, I think, are buying opportunities. Um, if you are looking to short, there is a supply zone just above you at this 1950s, 1960 area, and then you've got a wide zone of supply right ahead of you up to the 2000s. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. Hope you have a great week and uh, take care, all the best, and speak to you until the next video.